Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Same Bet. Tonight I'm trying something just a little bit different. Morton Lobin, one of the viewers, has recommended that I try a two finger grip rather than the three finger grip. And it's pretty simple. You've got the hard way set. He uses the 4242, takes the middle finger, goes right down the middle of the dice. The index finger holds the uh, uh, over the, the uh, left die and then your ring finger kind of holds them all together like glue. So uh, you can see my grip is a little bit off angle here. Um, you know, I played around with it. I'm not very consistent with it. So uh, we're gonna see how we're gonna, how we'll do tonight. Now landing zone is also something that's very important to Martin. And he's given me a couple of pictures and some ideas on how to sh uh, showcase your landing zone. I didn't have the proper equipment, but I'm gonna have some pictures down below and maybe I'll scatter them through the video so you can see what he does to make sure that he's hitting his targets. All right, let's roll them out. All right, so starting out, we're gonna start with a $500 bankroll, and I'm just gonna do a simple press and collect. So don't pay too much attention to the betting. The betting is what it is, and it's fine. This is really about the grip in the landing zone in this particular video. Uh, now, I also want to say in the, in the intro, I said this is how Morton grips it. I actually don't know that that's how he grips it. That's how I grip it. So there could be a different, uh, a, a different variation in this one. Uh, but, you know, he's been watching me practice, and I've been using the three-finger grip for some time. And he just said, hey, why don't you give this one a shot? Give it a try. See how well you do with it. And uh, it, I'm not new. This is not a new grip for me. I've actually used it quite a bit in the past. In fact, it's my backup uh, grip. Um, when things just aren't going my way, I'll shake things up. I will go ahead and go to this two-finger grip, uh, just as I outlined before, and, uh, and throw them and see how well I do. Now, again, it's just a really simple, I love this grip because it's, it's very easy to pick up, very quick to pick up and, and, and toss it. Uh, two fingers in the front. I've got one finger right down the middle, uh, another finger stabilizing the uh, side, and then the ring, ring finger uh, just kind of holding the things together nice and, uh, you know, not, not tight, but nice and uh, tight. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I also um, just do the same thing. I do a slight pendulum swing and uh, try to hit just past the big six and eight in the pass line bar. That's where I'm trying to land. Oop, there we go. I did a pretty good job on that one. Uh, but I gotta say, I'm not as consistent uh, with my landing zone as I am with the three finger grip. Um, now, I'm also gonna try to insert a couple of pictures here. Morton has come up with a, uh, a way to spotlight the landing zone. And, uh, you know, Morton's, uh, he's a pretty handy guy. And he's got these, uh, a light, just a little simple light fixture uh, with a toilet paper roll uh, that creates a spotlight right exactly where you should be uh, landing the, uh, the dice. Uh, so hopefully if, uh, if you have some material like that and if you want to give it a try, uh, leave some comments and see how it works. And uh, Morton, uh, if you're uh, watching this, yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the, uh, on the spotlight. All right, so here we go. You can see I've got my dice in the 4242 uh, hard way set. And what I noticed with the two finger grip, at least the two finger grip the way I do it, I frequently will have at least one die that goes off axis. And this actually works out pretty well for me, and we'll cover that here towards the end. Uh, but yep, so let's just uh, uh, watch here for a little while, see how things are going. All right, it's two, one, three, the green die went off axis. You can see down at the bottom, I am tracking my numbers. Um, uh, not playing the El Tal Small, but I do like to track it. And I'm using my Craps Nation uh, friends, uh, the chips that they've uh, sent to me you know, over the past few months. I like to uh, showcase those on the uh, all tall small. Dice are out. Yep, so hitting them right around that big six, big eight. I, I, I need to go just a little bit further uh, than I am. I'm also um, trying to get the dice, I don't know, maybe about two feet off the, off the deck. Eye level for me, uh, but I'm only like five foot six, so <laughs> eye level's not that, that, that high. And like I said, I'm just doing a simple press and collect here. Um, you'll see uh, my blue chip off to the right uh, on the big six and eight. That's what I'm using to help keep track. I, I, I gotta say, I'm horrible. Did I press the last one? Did I collect it? I, I, I can't remember. So I'm trying to use a little trick there to uh, remind me where I'm at uh, in the sequence. All right, six, two, eight, the green die again, off axis. Hey, real quick, while we're resetting all the bets, Take this opportunity to hit that subscribe button down below. 
Don't forget to ring the bell and get notified of any new videos that I'm putting out. Thanks. We're going to pay it. That $12 is going to win 14 bucks. And uh, okay, we're going to press this up. So I've got $24 on the eight, racked a couple of dollars. Moved the blue chip. Uh, the six is my collect. The eight is the press. Dice are out. Yep, pretty good. Five, four, nine. They stayed on axis that time. All right. Uh, that's uh, number nine, I think, is Dice Tosser. Uh, I, uh, I reserved number 10 for my friend Bird Dog. If you ever watch any of our live fantasy craps and we hit a 10, you're going to hear this <laughs> in the background because Bird Dog just made some money, especially if it's a hard 10. Don't ask me to do that <laughs> again. Dice are out. Six, five, yo. <laughs> okay, <laughs> talking about my Craps Nation friends. Uh, this one I uh, have uh, reserved for Color Up, uh, part of the Color Up Club, and uh, using that as my number 11 uh, marker. One die went off axis again. Can't get a yo without a, uh, going off axis, or without a six. Okay, dice went off the screen just a little bit, but that is an eight. That is a six, two, eight, again, off axis. So you can probably see a pattern here. So uh, this two finger grip, I am throwing them off axis. And I'm gonna go ahead and talk about it now. So the advantage of going off axis in the hard way set. So you, you've got a hard way, let's say the fours are on top. It really doesn't matter which ones are on top. But with the hard way set, you're, you've got two ways to make a seven. Uh, a 5-2 and a 4-3. If you keep them on axis, there's two ways to do that. If you have one die that goes off axis, then you've eliminated the 5-2 the and the 4-3, right? So, and you can't even get the 6-1. So something has to go wrong in, in order for you to, to seven out. And it will go wrong. If, don't get me wrong. It, it Things go bad. Uh, but if you have a little bit of control over an off-axis grip or off-axis toss like this, you tend to have some good rolls. And there we've got a 4-1-5. Now, Morton, uh, he asked me to run with the hard way set. A lot of times what I'll do with the uh, uh, two-finger grip is I'll do the all sevens. Uh, and then, again, going off-axis, um, you're not going to hit uh, a, a seven. All right, so that must have been a point. Hey, and look at that. For all you guys that, that uh, give me a hard time for not playing the odds, it looks like I had odds back there that time. Uh, and it worked out okay for me this time. All right, moved my blue chip over to the eight. That means this is going to be a, uh, a collect. Uh, but this is a come out roll. So uh, uh, I've stopped working my come outs, at least for a while. Uh, you know, Mel over at Craps Hawaii and I have talked about this quite a bit. And... That, that come out seven just, just kills me. Oh man, I didn't see it. I don't know who the, uh, who I had. A, oh, I think, I think on the six I had Sleepy. I can't remember. Uh, see, I just about paid myself right there. I stopped it because that was a come out roll. I set the, uh, set the point to the six. Um, so I stopped, uh, stopped that right there. Yeah, put a couple of bucks back in the uh, odds. And let's go again. I love the grip cam here. The, 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 I, I've nicknamed it the grip cam. Uh, nice close up on uh, what's happening with the, the with, with your grip. Uh, six five yo off axis. So if you have a good off axis uh, set that you like, let me know because it seems like I might have a little bit of talent with this one. All right, so that was a yo. We had color ups chip over there. Four two four two is the set of the day. Dice are out. Six four ten off axis. And you can hear bird dog. I need a sound bite. That's what I need. I need a recording of bird dog going hee hee hee, or uh, or sleepy going yo, and put that in my videos. <laughs> and while I'm at it, get one of Mel saying rubbish. 
All right, so for for those of you who might not know, these are my friends over at the Craps Nation. You know, some of the guys that I spend a lot of time with uh, talking about strategy. Basically, we talk crap all the time. Not necessarily about craps, but we talk a lot of crap. Here we go. Dice are out. Four, two, six. Stayed on axis that time. Um, my landing zone was a little short of where I would have liked it, but uh, good results. Good results. And that's a point, too. Hey, look at that. I'm going to win some odds again. Mark the six. There we go. Pay it off. $10 on the front line, $12 in the odds. And what am I going to do with it? Oh, it looks like I'm going to use that money and press stuff up. Yeah, it's a pretty decent long roll here going. So uh, let's uh, see what we could, see what we're going to do. Getting some change. All right, what's going on? All right, looks like I'm going $24 on the 6 to match what I have on the 8. Got another $5. Am I putting it in the field? This is a come out roll. Do you really? Yeah, there we go. All right, so I'm just going to rack it up. And yeah, put a couple of bucks in the hard way. So yeah, why not? So it looks like I've got two dollars on a what is that? A hard ten dollar on all the other hard ways. There we go. Dice are out. And it's another four two six. All right. So uh, it's looking out, looking pretty good. So that was another come out roll. So we're not going to collect any money on it. Let's set the puck. And am I going to pull it down on odds? And I got to mark it. Yep, here we go. Look at that. Going high roller. $25 knots. All right, here we go again. Dice are out. Two, one, three. Hard four. Okay, staying on axis this time. So it looks like, um, um, uh, you know, I'll have to look at the stats. I don't know if it's a 50-50. Uh, how often am I going off axis versus on axis? Uh, but you can, sit, you can see this is a pretty decent long run. Uh, looks like I just made the small right there. Oh, and it was a hard four. And I had uh, money on the hard ways. All right, this looks like it's a collect. Yep, so rack it up. Move it over to the press. And dice are out. Hard four. And I still have money on that hard four. <laughs> Yeah, that's another uh, bird dog number, the the tens and the fours. But uh, I seem to roll more tens, so I, that uh, that's why I put his chip over there on the uh, Craps Nation uh, row of fame, I guess. All right, so this should be a press. So I won money on the the four and the hard way. So what are we going to do with it? All right, let's. Bump up the nine and the five. Put a little money on the 10 and on the four. And I still got some money to work with. All right, so we bump up the hard ways and I'm bumping up the eight. You know, uh, uh, one of my mentors, uh, Tony Leo, uh, he's fond of saying press with a purpose. And uh, so that's what we're trying to do here. So uh, in the press and the collect, when it's time to press, I want to press with everything I've got. Uh, so whatever I've won, I'm putting it back out there in the field. I'm trying to take advantage of a long roll. It's five, four, nine. All 
All right, looks like that's the second hit on the nine. And we're going to get paid $714, $21 for the nine over there. And this should be a collect. I think I, I forgot to move my uh, blue chip over to the six in this one. Let's see, let's see what I do with it. There's $21. Yep, I am going to collect it. Yep, there we go. All right, so now I should, um, yep, there we go. I, I figured it out. I should be on the press uh, number this time. There we go. Dicer. 639, off axis six. Look at that. All right, so this one was a press, I think it said. Uh, so we're going to win another $21 on this one. Oh, first to go to mark the nine. So I'm one number away from the uh, making the all tall small with this off axis throw. All right, let's bump up the nine to a quarter. And let's also bump up the five to a quarter. You know, there's a million different ways you can do uh, the press. You know, some people like to um, press whatever numbers are hitting. Uh, you know, if you can track them and you're, you're pretty good at that, some re good repeater numbers going, they'll press whatever's hitting. Some people prefer to press from the inside out. Um, some people will press sister numbers. No right or wrong. There's whatever you, you know, it's whatever comfortable for you, whatever you think is best. Here we go. Dice out. There it is. Okay, 617, and it was an off-axis throw. So both uh, both dice went off-axis. All right, let's uh, color it up here and see what we've got. All right, so I started with a $500 bankroll. Um, and one, two, three, four, five. So it looks like 550, 500 and 60, 570 bucks. So made $70 off of that off axis throw. And uh, 23 rolls without hitting a seven, that's a that's a good roll in anybody's book. Now I wish I'd have made a little bit more money off that. I've got to look and see what I was really doing with the betting. I don't think that that was my best betting strategy. Uh, but uh, taking a look at the gauges on my fours and tens, uh, stayed in the green zone, didn't have too many, didn't have too few, uh, right where I expected to be. Inside hits, didn't have quite as many inside hits, and that's probably because of the off-axis. I probably had a, a, a few more uh, yo's and uh, uh, threes, uh, uh, you know, ace, deuce, threes than, than normal. Um, yeah, take a look at that. I had four, uh, four threes uh, in the mix. Other than that, it was a pretty even distribution with no, uh, no 12s. Um, uh, overall, we're pretty proud of that. Pretty, pretty happy with this roll. Uh, and it is one that, that I need to take a stronger look at because I do seem to be do doing pretty well with it. If I can keep some consistency on the off axis and start betting appropriately, uh, I think it could be a real money maker. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Give it a shot, see what you think on your practice table. And if you're making some money on it, let me know. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in. Catch you next time.